show. We got a full house. I'm ready to give y'all the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. We got a very, very, very special featured guest I'll introduce on the other side. A couple of usual suspects. I am your host, Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. It's the name of the show, and it's live right now. entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J is live. Be down with us tonight at 804-402-2893. Be down with the flagship show heard live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. Thank you to everybody that's rocking with us tonight. We appreciate those folks that are already tuned in right now to Facebook Live. We appreciate you guys. We thank the folks that are listening to us on our website, www.legacyinternetradio.com. Special love goes out to those folks that listen to us every single week on TuneIn, on Stream, on Simple Radio, all of our affiliates. Much love to y'all. Got a lot to get to tonight. It's a big, big, big show. We have a huge guest uh, that has joined us in studio and introduced momentarily. But before I do that, I need to grab uh, my usual suspects. I like to call them that. Hopefully they don't mind. Uh, they join us whenever I tap them on the show and they say, I need you, brother. Uh, and my brother to my right is one of those. My brother Ivan is here. What's going on, man? Yeah, what's going on, fam? How what's you going on? How you doing, bro? Lovely, lovely. Doing all right? I'm ready for this week, man. Yeah? I'm ready for this week. So, ready to make moves and keep it moving. So you mind if I pick on you right quick? Oh, I'm down. No doubt. So unless you move closer to the Facebook Live, which I'm not going to ask you to do, but uh, I am going to pick on you about your hat. Oh, hey, hey, I love that. I don't pick on you about the smiley right. faces. Right you know, it's got yeah. big smiley faces and pizza. And I, I'll be honest with you, bro. I don't think I've ever seen you wearing this hat before. That's how I roll, man. Is it's, it? a, it, it's a gift from my father. Hey, what you don't know is it's a you size. Yeah. So that means the peanut <laughs> head is still rocking. I'm still good. Uh, I got a couple of gray hairs popping in, but it's all good, yo. I don't mind. The youth size that my pop gave me, and I'm still rocking it. I can dig it. If it is, you, feel you, good, you right? just took all of the venom out of me picking on you. What you said, what you said, hey, my pop gave you this, this is a gift. Like, hey, man, I can't, I got nothing left. What, what can I say? Yeah, you just I, are. I'm a beast with it. I love it. You did it. I appreciate it, my you. man. Uh, of course, he joins us also whenever we have an opportunity to have him here. My brother John is in the building with us today. What do you do, homie? What's up, bud? What's going on? I'm chilling, man. It's good to see you back at your home. How you doing? Good to be here. Good to be here. Traveling, good man. Always. All over the place. It's yeah. good to see you, man. Uh, you ready to have some fun? Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. You know, we're going to talk some trash before the end of this night. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, and so I'm happy now, y'all, because it's time to introduce uh, our featured guest of the night. He is a hip hop artist. I like to call him conscious. I asked him if that was okay earlier. Uh, and he said, maybe, we'll see. Uh, once we have an opportunity to have him grab the mic and talk to us, you listeners will decide. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you our brother Vontae. What's up, man? Hello, hello, hello. How you doing today, man? I'm awesome, man. It's good How to see you? you. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. It's good to meet you. Yeah, man. It's, you know, we, we had our conversations and we set everything up and we finally got to this day and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into conversation with Vontae, the artist, but hopefully we get to know who Vontae, the man is as well. Right. Yeah, that's the Absolutely. Goal. That's the goal. So you're an artist. What does that mean to you? What, what does being an artist mean? Um, it means that I have the ability to control people's minds. 
and emotions yeah. and all that stuff. You yeah. know, music can can make you feel a certain way, make you think a certain way, can persuade you to do certain things. Right. So, I love being an artist. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Uh, for a while now. Um, I started out singing, yeah. and then I switched into doing rap and hip hop and learning more about the culture of rap and hip hop. So yeah. maybe 2014 rapping and then anything behind that is singing. So you got about, I guess about five years in. Little, yeah. Little about five years yeah. in. All right, so you on your grind. Shout out to uh, our brother True Master is checking in. Peace to you, brother. Hey. Uh, our brother hey. Comedian Tim Man is checking in. He's saying salute uh, as well. So let's talk a little bit about it. What was that song that you heard as a young man mm -hmm. that told you, you know what, I think I could do that? You know what I mean? Was there a song? I guess I should assume there was, mm -hmm. but was there a song or was there an artist or a feeling? Uh, my mom is the hugest Michael Jackson fan you ever want to meet. Yeah. I bought her the Thriller jacket for her birthday, <laughs> everything. So she, <laughs> so Michael Jackson was like the artist that I saw. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like the Thriller video yeah. scared the out of me. Yeah. yeah. But, that's what made me want to do music. The like, Thriller Jacket. The, the Thriller music, the Thriller Jacket, the video, Michael Jackson, yeah. all that. Were you one of those young men that tried to do the moonwalk? Did you Absolutely. Move? Can you My move? mom taught me because she, she knew every move. Your mom could moonwalk? She, she made sure I did the, the crotch grab. <laughs> she made sure I did the moonwalk. She's like, you ain't doing it right. You got to look like you walking on water. Did you have a signature Michael Jackson song that you knew that you was going to sing? Uh, you know, like the talent show song. Everybody got the talent show song. What's the um, talent show song? I would say for me, if I was a singer, which I'm not, uh -huh. Man in the Mirror is easy to sing. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't sing, mm -hmm. you could probably not mess mm -hmm. that up too bad, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, but you can't really dance and do the moonwalk. Right. right. So let me see. Not like Michael. Yeah, let's see. We have to pick a Michael Jackson song for you. Yeah, we got to. But see, since you're still looking for one, uh -huh. I would tell you ABC was the easiest one for me. <laughs> hey, look, I was, I was practicing. Yeah, look, that was getting me through school right, right. there. You know? I knew my alphabet, you know. Right. <laughs> Right. I, I was about to tell you, but not not ABC. ABC. The best the best Michael Jackson song to sing for a young brother like yourself is "Lady in My Life." Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, I love that, that one. I love that, that one. That one got There'll me. be no darkness exactly. tonight. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Your love oh. will shine. Twenty years ago. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 Twenty years ago, I might have been able to hit that joint. Too many cigars for me though. Man, that song, that song, yeah, that song. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all. That song. Yeah. There, there, there's an American slogan. It's called "Get Her Done." Get Her Done. <laughs> that's the one that get her done. <laughs> and then that happened just now. Right. right. It was dope. All right. Yes. So hey, look, see, now you got three brand new agents. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, we rock with that. Yes, uh -huh. sir. Yes, Show sir. Yes, right. sir. I'm gonna still stick to ABC because yeah. my vocabulary is limited, y'all. <laughs> I know don't rate me too, so but, but I can get to them. Right. I can get to them. Right. ABC is easy. Yeah, no, it's easy. A one, two, three. A zero four four zero two two eight nine three is the number to dial. You wanna rock with us? We shall roll with y'all. So as you grew up, Michael Jackson was a, a, a influence Absolutely. for you. Uh, the hip hop side. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Did you have any influences there when you started? Not at all. Really? Funny thing, I didn't really listen to hip hop like that. Um, I guess the first introduction to hip hop that I had was Missy Elliott because my mom had a bunch of cassettes, CDs, and all that stuff. And we would always go to the thrift store, she would buy music. And Missy Elliott was probably the first taste of hip hop that I ever had. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Missy was dope. And sure. I heard that she was on her way back coming out soon. You got a favorite Missy song? Mm -hmm. I love the Cookbook album. Yeah. The cookbook album. Yeah. And her first one. Yeah. yeah. The Rain. I remember the first yeah. time, I think The Rain's on the first one. I remember the first time we all saw it, we were tripping like, mm -hmm. I mean, is this some sort of psychedelic drug coming right. out of the television? Because it was bugged out right. visually. Uh, she does some crazy videos. Yeah, 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 she did. So oh, she could dance her tail off, you know, right, like, yeah. real talk. She can sing, rap. Yeah, she, sing. she did it all, yeah. Yeah, you gotta love her. You gotta love her. So let's talk a little bit about the single. Um, and we're gonna play it later on in the show. Uh, but the single is called Contagious. Contagious. And uh, that's what you're here to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, amongst other things. And so let's talk about it. Where did the inspiration for Contagious come from? Came from a very frustrating place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've seen the movie um, Black Klansman. I have. Have you I have. Everybody, you've, you've seen it? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All right. So we've all seen it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that movie frustrated 
me. So to the point where I felt like I had to vent, but I couldn't vent the way I wanted to vent. So I was like, what's the best way to vent? Through music. Right. So I woke up the next morning and wrote Contagious. And I just wanted to know, what, what, what would it feel like to be racist? Not that I want to be racist, but right. it's like, how do, you, how do you feel? How do you wake up every day and you hate on someone who you don't know, you never met them, you don't know their struggles, and yeah, so how does it feel to be a racist? Right. Did you, let's talk, let's talk about that inspiration, let's dig into that a little bit, because mm -hmm. you know, when I saw Black Klansman, I had two reasons for watching it. Mm -hmm. One, it was Spike Lee, right. uh, and, and, and pretty much anything that he does, I'm gonna watch it. I'm not gonna, always, I'm not gonna always like it. Right. Uh, and to be honest with you, I didn't care too much for that movie, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm going to. Crooklyn always, was good too. Crook, yeah, Crooklyn, Crooklyn was good. Yeah, it, it, Crooklyn was Crooklyn, good because it reminded me. It, it, right. you know, that was good because it reminded me of my childhood. The more better makes it more better. <laughs> more better, yeah. More better yeah, blues, yeah. Um, uh, I, the reason why I wanted to see it was obviously the the, the, the topic, what it was about, and then right. of course it was Spike. Mm -hmm. What the, was the driving force for you to even want to see that movie? I think the controversy behind it and the. You know, everybody's talking about it. It's like Spike Lee's new movie. It's like, whoa, I gotta see it. It's kind of like when somebody drops a new song, you're like, oh, I gotta go listen to that. Right. So it's it, for me, it was like, okay, Spike Lee's movie. Let me go check it out. And then the title of it was like Black Klansman. What that is that about? Makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, Let me go check this out. And then you know, after I saw it, I was like, whoa. Was there anything in particular that kind of got your attention? A lot of times, movies will have the moment. Right. Like, what moment? Was there a moment? I in think the, movie the, for you? the moment was probably the ending where the lady was trying to plant the bomb inside of the, the mailbox and she couldn't get it and then she was fumbling with it and then I was like, yeah, look at God working his match at the end. Okay. You, don't, you can't even do it right. Yeah, yeah. So then when, you know, when the explosion happened, I was like, whoa, he, took, he really took it there. It's like right. everything went full circle. So right. You get what you put out. Right. Now, what kind of response are you getting from Contagious? Ooh. Uh, mostly great, but there, you know, there's always some sort of like controversy, a little stuff behind and I know music a little like bit, this. I know a little bit about that, and I'm gonna hit that piece here in just a moment because there's a reason why I wanna take this chronologically. Mm -hmm. You got a, 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 an assist from a, uh, a very popular hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the tweet. Yes, so, okay, so I have notifications on my phone, J. Cole, when he tweet, you know, I gotta see what's going on. So I checked out his tweet, he tweeted out something that was um, kind of similar to like racism and stuff like that. And I wanted to slide my music in there and I was like, yeah, this is why I wrote this song. And so after that, Twitter just went boom, like crazy. So I tweeted the link to him and all of his fans like went crazy. They was checking out the song, hitting my inbox up, like telling me how they feel about it. And it was just crazy for like two weeks and it's still kind of going on. Everybody's yeah. still going crazy about it. Did you ever end up having any connect directly with, with him? In Not with J. Cole, but it's funny because like after my tweet got more, um, what is it called? Attention? Um, or yeah, likes or yeah more, more like uh, clicks on it and plays than his actual tweet. Right. And after a while they deleted it. But it's cool because I got a screenshot of it. Really? They, <laughs> they deleted yours? Yeah, they deleted my tweet. Wow. Because okay. my, my tweet was bigger was bigger than his tweet. When you say they, you, you, I'm guessing you mean him or his people. I don't know if, it's, if it was just people, if okay. it was Twitter, I don't know. Because that was a response to something he wrote. Yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah, so more than likely, right. with, off of his page, they realized, oh boom, right. this dude is getting attention. Right. <laughs> we don't right. know who this dude is right. yet. Yeah. Nobody's commenting on this right. dude uh, that right. officially right. are responsible for these tweets. Yeah. So it's like, let's take that off from? real quick before we verify. With, 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 right. with, with a, a little bit of limited information about J. Cole, mm -hmm. it was more than likely his people. Yeah. Probably. And, Probably. And, and, and the reason they would have uh, taken it down mm -hmm. would have been for um, more legal ramifications. Right. Not that they had anything against you. It's kind of like, like he, he was he's trying promoting. to. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he don't, they don't know, you know, if they leave it up, what could happen. You know, they don't know what you did, whether or not you got the music cleared or, right, or whatever. Right. It is. And now yeah. they have it They can be tied into. They can be tied <laughs> into anything that you are doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think they. I don't think J. Cole or his people. Right. But no shade. No know, shade. Stop right. shine. No shade. They just got to deal with it from a legal standpoint. Yeah. I didn't know if it was Twitter or I went back to it. I was like, whoa, the tweet is and, gone. And you might be able to reach out, like to his people or somebody, yeah. with a screenshot of what happened and say, hey, you know, guys. Right. 
Yeah. 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 That's an open door. It, it don't is. look at it negative. It that's is. A, no, I'm not looking at it, it negative at all. J. Cole, yeah, that's why you have PR people. That's right. why you hire people. Right. You have you hire people to do certain things. Now, more likely, a lot of people got other artists mm -hmm. that they bottle and stuff. Some artists just go wild, you know. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I ain't gonna lie. Well, I look at it this way. You know, I'll take whatever publicity mm -hmm. uh, I can get, and I look at it this way, right? Good or bad. Good, 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 good or bad. bad. And, I, and I'll take it a step further. When you blow up, because mm -hmm. uh, you're in the process now, but when you really, really blow up and you find yourself in the same place as J. Cole, mm -hmm. you know, you just let me slide over here and talk to this right. for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember just going back in 2019? Right. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, hold on. I right. got the screenshot. Yeah, I got the screenshot. <laughs> yeah, that's, real, that's, yeah. that's real dope. Now, with everything that's good, sometimes comes some bad. Mm -hmm. And you got some negative mm -hmm. uh, feedback from, from, from Contagious. Right. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the cover art is a picture of this young white dude with a um, backwards cap on, and it's the Make America, a Make, a, Make America Great Again hat. Um, and a lot of people, even before like sharing it to them and them listening, they were like, I don't know if I'm gonna listen to this because you know, they automatically assume that it's like some sort of like crazy, crazy, crazy song. Um, so a lot of people, they're like, you're making it seem like all Trump supporters or Make America Great supporters are racist, which is not the case right, at all. Right, right. And I can tell you as someone who speaks pretty loudly mm -hmm. about my feelings on um, political affairs in our country, right. more specifically our president and his, his followers, right. I understand what that backlash feels like. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us how you felt when you started seeing it? Was it, I'm guessing it's not mm -hmm. something you, you were prepared for. Definitely, definitely not. How, how does it make you feel? Mm, makes me feel like, well, first of all, it, it, it didn't make me feel bad at first. Um, it made me more so feel like, wow, I have like this, like I told you before, like I have this power, like this control to right. make people feel a certain way, but it's good to have people to talk about certain right. things. Like I spoke to someone before, after I put it out, it's like, well, when is there ever a good time to speak about racism? Right. Whether you put this out when Trump wasn't in office, it's, it's not a, never a really good time to talk about racism. No. Like, it, it, someone's going to be offended. Somebody's going to feel some type of way. So let's yeah. just talk about it now. Yeah, I look at it like this, and I think that's a, an, an outstanding, outstanding way to put it in, right. in, 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 in perspective. And I'll, I'll, again, I'll take it a step further. You know, these are the same people who were not happy when Barack Obama was the left-leaning black president. Right. And they're still unhappy with Donald Trump, the mm -hmm. right-leaning white president. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to get into how different they are. Right. There's certainly a time for that. And we can do that later in the show. I don't want to take away from you. But, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> But these people are gonna be complaining right. no matter what, yeah. <laughs> no matter yeah. what. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to kind of weather through mm -hmm. that storm. And now you have that experience I do. so that when it comes up again. I got the boxing gloves on, <laughs> on. Like, come at me, man, come yeah. at me. I can wait, gotcha. it's gonna be six months from now. You gonna mess around and have a, a, a response record. Right. It was not. Right, somebody gonna have a diss record for me. I'm waiting, cause I got a couple more tracks. Yeah. That's nah. on the back burner. I look forward to it. So listen, I think we have come to a point in the show where we need to know what mm -hmm. the deal is with this song. And we talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't gave the background on it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't talked about the positive response and feedback as well as the haters. Uh, everybody has heard the song except for the Ain't No House Devil Marcus J. <laughs> so I will give you the distinct mm -hmm. honor and pleasure of introducing mm -hmm. your song, my brother. What's up, my people? So this is my new record. It's called Contagious. If you heard it by now, you're about to hear it right now. All right, Facebook Live. Y'all go get the street, too. Hopefully they don't shut us down. Oh, no. I, I paid for these. Yeah. Alright, so we don't own the rights to this. We not own the rights to this. Getting killed over stereotypes. How many years we got to suffer? How many years we got to suffer? Headshot to the ground. I know the hate is in your heart. You want to seek the spell. You want your ignorance and everything you do to prevail. You want your white skin to be another excuse for your wrongs. Probably thinking, shut the fuck up, then you turn off the song. I know your president ain't hesitant to make you feel great. But his belligerence and ignorance is what we can't take. He 
wants the power and respect for you to stand in the applause. There's a reason for the season, so I'm trusting in God. And every black man ain't carrying around a gun. And every black man ain't ran from his son. And every black man wanna speak up for his rights. And every black man has a right to live his life. Life. How does it feel to be racist? It must be contagious. Cause the world is gone crazy. And your heart full of hate Why can't you take responsibility For the mess that you make We want you held accountable For everything that you do Instead of trying to put the blame On everybody but you You want to use your social status Try to make us feel small You want to paint this perfect picture You ain't missing Van Gogh I want to see a better future And all my niggas to shine I want a life without us fearing That one day we gon' die Cause we done been through hell and back And we done been through the pain Took a couple hundred years Just to get out of chains Trying to build a better future for my niggas to grow I'm trying to lead a better path and let the whole world know And every black man ain't carrying around a gun And every black man ain't ran from his son And every black man wanna speak up for his rights And every black man has a right to live his life Life How does it feel to be racist? How does it feel? It must be contagious Cause the world is gone crazy The world's gone uh -huh. I can better understand what you're talking about. I want to understand your mental, try to make you reflect. I want the answer to my question, that's with no disrespect. Cause I can put my pride aside and I can patiently wait. No, you don't like me, yeah, I see that f***ing smirk on your face. 40 acres in the mule, I'd rather die with respect. I'm sick of brothers dying and mamas carrying around all that stress. I want to show my future kids they look where daddy did. I'm trying to give a better future than where daddy lives. I want them trigger figures down, I know you hear me loud. I think I said enough, I wanna hear you now. Alright, so that was officially dope. Hey. <laughs> that was real dope. And, and and for the folks that are listening outside of Facebook Live. Uh, what I found to be real dope is to watch him get into his song. Like, I love to see somebody embracing and enjoying their mm -hmm. own work because you put a lot into right. it and you should enjoy uh, the fruits of your own labor. Let me get some love in to the folks that are checking us out. Mr. 3375 is checking us out and whatnot. He's our brother uh, for our show hey. here. Uh, and he said post the link. So uh, I don't know if there's a link that you want to post in there, okay. or, but if you can do that. And see, Rhonda says, yep. Uh, Asia says, what's good, Jay? Looking great. Uh, Shade <laughs> awesome. is uh, dropping some fire on here. And uh, let's say, uh, Shade, what a great message. Keep doing your thing, young man. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. 3375 again says he loves it. Uh, you have his stamp on that one. Uh, hey, my big cousin you. Tony is saying peace to us. Uh, let's see. And then. Uh, you just dropped the link in there. So if you're watching you. on Facebook Live, uh, Vontae just dropped the, the link in there so you have access to the song. You know, I have Stephen with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio, 804-402-2893. Uh, excuse me, 804-402-2893 is the number to dial. If you want to rock with us, we will roll with you. Um, so Vontae, let's talk a little bit about the song. Um, as I listen to it, you know, it's got a, a, a new school, old school vibe mm -hmm. to it. Um, what was you thinking about the song, aside from the inspiration to write the lyrics from, mm -hmm. from uh, Black Klansman? Mm -hmm. Did you have uh, kind of like a production mesh in mind? Were you looking for an old school, new school vibe? Mm -hmm. Or did it just come that way organically? I did want, I actually did want, want that sound. Because I was like, when I got to the chorus part, like I need somebody old school with like that soul, like you yeah. know how they used to sing back in the day. Yeah. But not too much, cause the song was real like smooth and like something you can just nod to. So right. I was like, I need something like that. But I was like, can't find nobody. Right. So I just started like, nah, nah. Yeah. and I was like, ooh, that kind of sound good. Uh -huh. So I added it, built it, built it up, and that's how I got it. So 
the, the chorus is more like soulful and old school, but then you have like hardcore a little bit with the verses. So. Right, right. Yeah. I mentioned when we were in pre-production before we went live, Conscious. Um, would you consider that a conscious song or yourself a conscious uh, artist or did the song just do what it did mm -hmm. and staying away from labels? But I'm asking you that that way for a reason. Um, I think I wanted to take a turn with my music. Um, I put out a lot of music and I got a lot of feedback from most people um, who said they wanted me to talk about certain things. And I'm like, mm, I don't want to talk about that. And you know, me personally, I think really had to sit there and think about what I really want to talk about. I'm like, dang, I'm starting to build my fan base. I'm starting to have a huge platform. And it's like, well, now I have an opportunity to say what I want to say because I have people watching, I have people listening. So let me drop something different. And then I spoke to my manager, um, Annie, who's back in LA. And I'm like, when should I drop this record? And she's like, let's just wait till um, Black History Month. It's like, no, let's put it out now. Like, I'm that type of artist. I'm like, I want it out now. Yeah. So yeah. she's like, no, let's just wait and see how it, how it goes. And then you can drop it on Black History Month. So, right. Yeah. So put that's it when it came out? It came out in February? Put it out in February. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you have won? Why? why what kind of deterred you from wanting that to go out at Black History Month? Um, I think because I'm a I'm a new artist, so I didn't have that I don't have that many fans. So I figured, you know, put it out early, build the hype behind it, and then when Black History Month comes, it's like it blows. Oh, right, it blows, right. and that's what happened. Right. And, and to be mm -hmm. real with you, I, I I asked you that question for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm actually impressed that you kind of you you. Seven. Like uh -huh. you not you wanted it out before right. that. Right. I'm that type of controversial person where mm -hmm. I want to hit you head first. Right. Like I want right. to get it out. Right. I don't want it to be right. a part of something that's already existing. Right. You right. know, I want right. to get this out to right. see it and, and the confidence right. in you just looking at you, yo, right. right here in front of you. Right. Yo, I'm impressed, dude. Thank you. I kinda <laughs> wanna I'm kind of disappointed he said he got a manager in L.A., but <laughs> it is what it is, right. you know, like, I, I like it. Yeah, you, 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 have a, you have a very good presence. Thank you, overall. thank you. Overall, and it, it's funny, because I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm thinking, because you remind me of a guy that's like, like a nephew to me, like a mm -hmm. little brother. He's very uh, successful in the mm -hmm. music industry. His name is Chad Elliott. Um, people inside the industry know him, who he really is. Like, he, he discovered... Uh, Swiss Beach, Ooh. and he uh, he kind of he's the guy that gave Jermaine Dupri his start in production. Oh, that's cool. And you kind of look like you mm -hmm. can be his son. Like, Thank and, you. Yeah, you, <laughs> and yet the end you give off the same vibe and energy that he gives off. And then one time in his career, he was like a VP at MCA Records and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he just really you ever saw the movie Crush Groove? No. Yeah, when did okay. that come out? Yeah. Before 92? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 19, 19, 1985. But if you ever see if you ever see the movie Crush Groove, Russell. he's the kid that won uh, the was... second place in the contest. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. the kid that won the Yeah. He won like a sound system or whatever. Yeah. Second and place he's fighting with the fat boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's Chad. <laughs> Chad. Chad was he took from there. And went all the way to the top. See, now you're going to make it. Now you're going to make it. When you look at it, I watch Crush Groove. When you watch it, you look at him, you're going to see this kid. I've watched Crush Groove probably 195 times mm -hmm. in my lifetime. I saw it in the movies in 1985. So, <laughs> uh, and I know the scene you talk about. So now I got to go back and watch it. And <laughs> yeah, he's, watch. In, he's, he's in a couple things. I was, I was like really involved, like 80s through the 90s. I was like, in the music industry thing, that was my thing. Yeah. So I was real big in that. So I was that whole crush group vibe, all the way into Juice and the other movies. Juice, like, yeah. Old, now that was '92. Juice, <laughs> hey, <laughs> but, uh, I was with you though, because mm -hmm. once he reminded me of the scene, uh -huh. now I remember that. Yeah, uh -huh. because I was, I'm still, I'm, I'm probably in between. Uh -huh. all, you, you know, you, you definitely got us. Uh -huh. You definitely got us, but because back then <laughs> I was listening to, I was watching Breaking and stuff, <laughs> and wanting to. Walk on the walls like Turbo. So, so I, got you. <laughs> I, can, I can definitely picture that. Ain't no Stephen Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy and that radio. 804 402 2893 is the number to dial. You want to rock with us? We'll roll with you. So, let's talk a little bit uh, and get to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we know where the song came from, mm -hmm. we know that you're a new artist. 
Uh, we know that uh, you're going to be big mm -hmm. because Thank you. you got the energy and the vibe and you got the talent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to agree with our sister Sharnay who says that you're a natural born star. Hey. So, so shout out to, <laughs> to Sharnay for, for continuing you. to rock with us and staying with us here tonight. Have you ever performed that, show, that song live before? I actually performed it uh, last Sunday. Did you? Mm-hmm. How did that go? It was it was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, like who wants to set the scene for us? So um, it was up in DC, um, Smith Public Trust. I don't know if you've heard of that before. You heard of that before? Yeah, Wale Land over Maryland, baby. Yeah, yeah. Wale, Wale performs there a lot. Um, so I went there. It's like an open mic sort of thing they have it every month. Um, so I went there, and before I started performing, I kind of filtered the room. I'm like, let me see who in here. I ain't trying to get <laughs> who knocked all out. In there? Right, let me see who in there. I ain't trying to get knocked in here with a brick. Um, so I was like, all right, let me kind of introduce the song because, you know, with music, you can kind of tell what somebody's going to perform based on, you know, how they dress or when the song comes on. So I was like, let me introduce this because right. I don't want nobody to be afraid. Now, how were you dressed? Um, you said how they... Ca casual because I didn't want to take away from the actual song and the performance. Okay. So I wanted to dress really like, you know, neutral, okay. no big chains and uh -huh. jewelry and all that stuff. Is I that was, your natural personal style? Yeah. Okay. Big yeah. chain? I, I wear like one chain. That's it. How you dress today is your natural personal style. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you made me look at my joint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Right. Because I don't want to be like, oh, I forgot my chain. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. I like to just be. But you're conscious in, in itself, man. Yeah. Like, you represent everything you're doing. Yeah. And I see it. In a and, manner. and you're true. Thank you. Yeah. Like, you can get certain vibes from certain people. Mm hmm and understand them and, and be willing to say, oh, I'm out for this dude. Yeah. Thank you. Without knowing somebody. Now, granted, that don't happen often. Right. I definitely am not <laughs> saying that I vouch for anybody <laughs> that, because like, that, that's a whole different right. terminology, but I can yeah. see you. Yeah. Thank you. I can definitely and you're true to what you're doing. Thank you. I respect that dude. That, you're, yeah. I'm impressed. I, were, I you, were you nervous when you saw the room? A little bit, yeah. but that's only because I knew I had a job to do. Right. It was more than just, okay, this is a performance. Right. I'm going to turn up. Right. I'm going to make everybody, you know, stand up and dance and right. all this stuff. Like, I knew I had, it was like a message I had to, it's kind of like being a teacher, standing right. in front of a classroom. You know, it's yeah. like you, you have something to say. You have to. You know what out. you know, and you're about to give it to them. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't, know, they don't know. I'll tell you a little story. Um, in the spring of 1991, I was in high school, and my father <laughs> and my brother took me and another person to the Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. Mm -hmm. And when we get there, uh, Dana Owens, y'all know as Queen Latifah was hosting. Mm -hmm. And during them days, she was in the prime of her hip hop career. Mm -hmm. And she introduced this group that come, they came out and they were dressed in black. They had black boots. They had their hats to the side. Mm -hmm. They had the gold chains. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and in them days, I, I was a pure, pure, pure hip hop, hip hop head. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing these dudes, there's four of them. I'm like, yo, they about to get it. Work, right. you know? And when the first dude grabbed the mic, and the first line that he uttered was, forever my lady. about <laughs> <laughs> Jodas. Right. <laughs> And of course, I was tripping off of it. Now, <laughs> Hold on, I got it. But, but, see, John, John, but, you, but see, John understands why I tell the story. I tell mm -hmm. that story to say your authenticity mm -hmm. has no competition. That's one of the taglines mm -hmm. of the show. I, I close it out by saying that. And I'm proud of you for just going in there as yourself. Right. And giving these people all you had, mm -hmm. doesn't matter how you drive. Right. That's, that's not thing. right. That's not that's not what I wanted you. I didn't want to make a fashion. You statement. wanted to you wanted them people to hear you right. on that microphone. Right. And they got a jewel right. once you opened up your mouth, just right. like we did when Jodeci did. Yeah. Jo Jodeci uh, had promo pics and they had on the outfit that they had on in the music video, which is like linen hoodies yep. <laughs> with linen shorts. I got the outfit. And boots. <laughs> Right? So the promo picture goes out. So you got, you got different teams. I don't even think they were teams. Nah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were Doc, I think they were Doc Martens, maybe. Yeah, I think they were Doc Martens. This they, was they before was like stomping boots. Anyway, so the promo pick goes out. So uh, Puffy's married to, I forget the girl's name, but she's a stylist mm -hmm. at the time. And she set the whole thing up. So everybody's like calling Puffy like, What's up shorts with your and boys? boots. What's up with your boys? What's it up was with like, you? It was just like shorts and boots. What's up with right. your boys? He was like, yeah. And we were like, shorts and boots? 
Yeah. Nobody could believe it. And fast forward five years, everybody in yeah, the hood yeah. had on shorts yeah. and boots. To, to this day, Too to high. this day, this everybody. was 28 years ago. And to this day, if you walk around certain neighborhoods in New York, you're going to see cats with shorts and Tim's on. Yeah. And when you see a cat here in Virginia, in mm-hmm. Maryland, the DMV area, mm-hmm. dressed that way, right. your first thought is he's from up top. Right. The crazy part about it is, Jodeci is from North Carolina. Yeah, oh, well, I'll tell you this. I not not the crack on North Carolina, right? But I still got them Sunset Park Timberland. <laughs> they come out to the mid chin, yeah. forty right. below. Yeah. Oh man, right. You're, what? Right. That's right. Jungle Brothers, yeah. forty below troopers. Yeah. That's right. Ain't but no. I get it in with them too, though. Don't right. miss the right. Ain't yeah. no half step with Marcus J live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. All right, Vontae, I'm gonna go take a uh, this portion of the conversation. I want to get to know you mm-hmm. a little bit. All right, so. Uh, if you could have dinner mm-hmm. with three people, mm-hmm. alive or not alive, mm-hmm. who are those three people and why? Mm. Yeah, um, think about that. Yeah, yeah, think about that one. Obama. Okay. Why? Cause he's just. I feel like he's super intelligent. Like I feel like I'm gonna learn something. Right. Like just just give me an hour with Obama. It's like I'm, I feel like I'm gonna learn like at least twenty new things. Right. Um. And then Oprah. Okay. Because it's like, how you get that rich? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um. And are you married? No, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm available. <laughs> and then, um. I don't know, who else? Who would y'all? Who would y'all? Nah, man, this is your question. This your question. Because you just Oprah, told me. You, Oprah, Obama. You I, just said two I, people my networking might get to. Right? I'll tell, tell you what. You ask us, we're going to be, that's another show. I'll so tell, you, gonna go I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to spit out three. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask my brothers to spit out three. But mm-hmm. we will not explain because we don't want to take away from you. Mm-hmm. We're going to do that while you're thinking on the third one. Is okay. that fair? Is that good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so so we, said, we said alive or not alive. Right. So my three and no particular order, uh, my grandfather, mm-hmm. uh, who, my mother's father, who, who passed away when I was three and a half, mm-hmm. and I have been following, I said I wasn't going to explain, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, my grandfather, mm-hmm. um, Bob Marley, mm-hmm. and Malcolm X. Okay. Those are my three. Which may change if you ask me tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, what's your three? So, so my three that I would really just unconsciously thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It's Harriet Tubman. Mm-hmm. She, well, I'm not going to explain. Yeah, he said no explanation. Malcolm X mm-hmm. and Martin Luther King. Okay. Mm-hmm. For for my 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 own reasons, mm-hmm. but they will change tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Because yeah. I might look something up right. and get one answer or not. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. John, what you got, bro? Um, John Henry Clark. Yeah. James Baldwin. Yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, God, mm, yes, yeah. real, real, real. And now I just real, mm. I need the swap for real. Right, real. Right, right. See, John came with the intellectual. Right, he did. <laughs> yeah, no, but see, I, I, was, I was trying to, you know, spin it a little different. Like, yeah. I was like, nah, yeah. it's cool because your mm-hmm. list is your list. Because, again, I, I led with if you ask me tomorrow, mm-hmm. I might say Tupac and, and Frank Sinatra. Right, and, right. Depending you know, on your day. Yeah. Man, I still want to know, I want to have a conversation with Abraham Lincoln. For real, bro. Right. I need to know something. Yeah, right. That's true. It's a funny thing. The funny thing about it is I had to be careful because a lot of people I was going to say actually had like a small, like Tupac. I had a conversation with Tupac before. Yeah. This is one thing. Yeah. But you mm-hmm. might, you got to be careful. And I was going to say, I was going to say before I said Sammy Davis, I was going to say Lena Horne, but I met Lena Horne one time. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah. you gotta go we didn't have a conversation, but I met her, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think of people I didn't ever mm-hmm. meet in person yep. that I really right. want to meet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where that mindset goes. Like even right. like, Muhammad Ali, I got a picture of him picking me up from a martial arts tournament. Yeah, yeah. oh, cool. Hey, I didn't know what he said. Yeah. <laughs> had no clue. Yeah. I was scared to death, to be honest with you. I thought my dad was the biggest person yeah. I'd ever met. Is yeah. he huge? No, nah, my dad ain't. Well, no, nah, my dad ain't. Muhammad Ali was 6'3". Well, I was small. 6'3". Muhammad Ali looked like, like a tree trunk, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, since we, and since, 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 since we name dropping the people that we met, I think, I, and I've been fortunate because I met a lot, a lot, a lot oh, of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I met a lot of people. But the one person that I met that kind of blew my mind was Dick Gregory because I was Ooh. really a big, huge Dick Gregory mm-hmm. fan, and he came to Richmond and had an opportunity to, to, to go 
where he was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had an opportunity to, to meet him, talk to him, and tell him about Legacy on that radio and get his reaction, uh, which was very brief, but I was able to tell him. That was really dope. So anyway, have you figured out your third? Give, give us your first two again. So I said Obama. Yeah. Yep. Oprah. Yeah. I am with you. I'm going to go and, with you. Uh, <laughs> They both alive. I'm trying to think of somebody who ain't here. Nah, it's on you. Sure. Nah, don't get pissed. Yeah, nah. Yeah. I ain't met neither one of them, so yeah. I'm just talking to I'm gonna go, go with you. You, <laughs> have the, you have the benefit of youth, right? And that's see, like when you get, like maybe their age, but definitely my age. You mm -hmm. stop really caring about people that's around because you figure like you mm -hmm. done seen it. So <laughs> yeah. I, don't want, yeah. I, don't, I mean, right. I think Obama right. and Oprah right. are both brilliant, but you can do that too. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I can get to where they yeah. at. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's I, the thing. You have that, you got you, you've, you've got the benefit of wisdom in the room from the 30s to the 40s to the 50s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and so yeah. it, we done see some stuff. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll say. So spit out, spit out your third one, man. Come on. I'll say my my dad. Your dad. Okay. Because I probably. Only met him maybe twice, three or four times. Okay, and that's real. Though. Yeah, and that's, that's real. real and reasonable. Yeah, yeah. That's and, real. and that yeah. And that's he's still good. alive. Well, yeah, we, that's good. Yeah. Since we, since we, uh, and I'll flip it back to you. Uh, are there any people who you would like to meet? Because I know with me, um, the f like that's a lie. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a lie. Yeah, yeah, like, really like, like, like realistically, <laughs> like, uh, and and the reason why I say it that way is because you know I've been in radio for seven years, mm -hmm. uh, going on eight, and mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to meet my mentor. Right. You know what I mean. My right. my mentor is a brother by the name of Warren Ballantyne, mm -hmm. and I would listen to him for years. I would listen to him. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to him before I was even in radio. I was like, man, this guy's sharp, <laughs> you know? And, and then I got into radio and I reached out to him and, and we began a friendship. Mm -hmm. And we had an opportunity to meet and spend time with one another. Mm -hmm. I, I got to meet my mentor because That's I opened cool. up my mouth. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So kind of going back to what we talked about a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there anybody out there, maybe in the music industry mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. that you would like to meet and maybe spend a few minutes with? Quincy Jones. Yeah. I just watched his um yeah. his net his uh yeah. Netflix. Yeah. What's it called? Icon? Is it called Icon? I thought it was just called Quincy. Yeah. Just called Quincy. 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 Yeah. Quincy. Yeah. Quincy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Quincy. So tell tell me about Quincy. What's the deal with that? So it was a powerful like documentary about his life, how he grew up. Right. And like he dealt with so many crazy things. Like his mom, he witnessed his mom like get taken away into a crazy home right and then he ran away from home and then he had to basically force himself to be an adult and he said he felt like he had to be like a gangster and just go out and do crazy stuff until he made a living for himself right and then to see him now how he met so many people like he broke barriers being like the first black person to do this the first black person to do this and how ambitious he was like to go and do certain things like right. he wanted to do music and then he was like okay let me try to do film and then let me try to do different things in music so it's like he did a lot of stuff yeah they're like called the dude and yeah, that's like that's a that's yeah. a Q, Q is the truth man yeah, like understanding that he was on the road with with orchestras at 14 right yeah. you know and, and and his musical genius he got to is, all that music. Yeah, his musical genius is like huge you know my you know my favorite uh my favorite trivia question and answer mm -hmm. with quincy jones mm -hmm. is for those of us who are huge fans of the television show sanford and son mm -hmm. quincy jones produced that song Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the not song, song and playing. the song is not called the Sam and the Sun theme because it was created before the show. Yeah. It's called the Street Beater. That's probably called. why that song was and he, had, he had a couple of other shows that he did uh, scores for. Yep, and quite a few movies. He did the score for Roots. Yeah, and he did a, that, quite yeah. quite a few movies. And um, he was oh, married to a tele he was married to a television star. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Peggy Lipton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, squad, and his kids. daughter, uh, uh, Kidada, 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 is, Kidada is is that child. You know, yeah. that's her mom. Yeah. So Peggy Lipton was kind of a big deal in the '60s and the '70s. So, uh, ain't no has to have Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. Uh, favorite artist? Give me, give me three. Three's a good number. Give me three of your favorite artists. I love Rick James. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you like Rick James before Dave Chappelle made them jokes? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think he knew it for James before the right, show. I think, I think that's what sparked me to go. Like, Who is Rick James? Yeah. Let me go see I'm what Rick this James. character is. I thought it was like a, just a character or another, something. Another true dude, man. 
Yeah, Rick James. Yeah. Yeah. Rick James. Oh, he Rick was James. Before the funk, he was crazy. When he worked, yeah. he was a Motown staff writer for years. Yeah. And oh. he went over to Europe and he did a lot of rock and roll stuff. And he came, he didn't get funky to the, mm-hmm. to like the mid, late I 70s. Yeah. But before yep. that, he was already a dynamic songwriter yeah. and yeah. amazing musician. And musician, yeah. So you got Rick James. Who else you got? Uh, Like Drew Hill, Cisco. Yeah. Drew Hill. Yeah. He okay. Okay. <laughs> he you know, you from yeah. Maryland, yeah. man. Yeah. So. Right there on Drew, Drew and Paul, Drew Hill. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's yeah. Right there in, in they, North Ave. They were dancing in the park. Right. I got pictures of them. Okay, go on. And then uh, Bobby Brown. Can't go oh, yeah. wrong with that. I, I ain't mad at you, though. Can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story, <laughs> <laughs> tell you a funny story <laughs> about Bobby, right? The summer, the summer of 1989, I was 15, and we went on a trip. Um, and uh, my dad and me were bunking in the same room together. Mm-hmm. My mom and my sister were together. So me and my dad. And... Uh, 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 Don't Be Cruel was maybe a year old at the time. It was on its way out. It was, you know, the record. It was, it was on its way out towards the summer of 89. But it was still hot. Mm-hmm. And I was playing it. You know what I mean? When Biggie would say, I make the tape rock to the tape pop, hey. that's how I was with, with Don't Be Cruel. So, the whole album or the single? The whole album. Yeah, that's a the, 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 the entire, the entire yeah, album. Yeah. The entire, every, every track. You know, it's one of the few every track records. Mm-hmm. Right? So anyway, um, I would play it every night before I went to sleep. And this one night uh, on vacation, I was sick. I didn't feel very well. Mm-hmm. And my pops was like, yo, I know you're sick, but you ain't gonna put the, ta- you ain't gonna put the tape on right. <laughs> right. You ain't gonna put, you know, Bobby, was able, Bobby. You know, Bobby was able to touch the, the family. So what's your deal with Bobby? Why Bobby? He was, he was a character, like, aside from the music, he was just like a character. Yeah. Like somebody who you, from like off the stage, you'd probably be like, dang, he's huge. Like. Mm. Everybody probably wanted to be Bobby Brown before you knew who Bobby Brown really was. Right. And then, you know, you kind of sympathize as well because you learn his story right. with watching his interviews right. and all that stuff. So it's like, right. can't really judge somebody for too much because, right. you know, we all go through stuff. Learning his story made me love him even more. Right. I mean, I was a Bobby guy back right. then, but, you know, in the 30 years since Don't Be Cruel came out, right. I've grown to love him even more. I remember right. going to New Edition concerts over the years and my mood at the end of it mm-hmm. was a lot was largely determined by mm-hmm. whether Bobby was there or not. <laughs> what's, it, what's your favorite song? My favorite Bobby, Bobby Brown, Brown song? Mm-hmm. Probably the remix to Every Little Step because that's the one he raps on. Mm-hmm. You know, so everybody wants to know what's going mm-hmm. down. You know, that, that, yeah, that Bobby, Bobby Brown, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's probably my favorite um, Bobby Brown song. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the others. I love the, the more popular ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I thought that Humping Around was a very, very underrated record. Mm-hmm. It, was, it, was. It, was, it was on, um, I think that record was called Bobby. If it ain't good enough, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Enough, good, enough, yeah good enough, yeah. So, yeah. and I think he had the the duet with Whitney on that record. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I think King of Stage was a very underrated, but he was very bubblegum too. When he which, had, which one? That was his first record that came out right yeah. after uh-huh. he left New Edition. It was called King I Need of Stage. A Girlfriend? Girlfriend is on that yeah. record. Girl Next Door is on that <laughs> record. Uh, so if you hadn't if you hadn't had a chance to go through that yeah, piece of his I catalog, I had a five minute conversation with Bobby Brown. I think it was eighty six. He was walking the streets of New York with old shoes on, carrying that record under his arm, yeah. going into MCA office by himself. Yeah, oh, yeah. by himself, getting that, trying to get that record done. Do you see how you see you see the fight? You see yeah. the grind. You see the grind. So a um, couple quick uh, questions I ask you before we kind of close it out. Um, Music we know comes in different waves. We've talked about it a little bit tonight. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite era of music? In the eighties. Give me, give me why, and give me a couple artists that make you say that. Now you did a little bit with, like, with Rick my, and I'm Bobby. You, Michael, you had Michael, you had um, Bobby Brown, you had like so many people like the the funk mixed with the soul, yeah. like all that. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. Yeah. Music. It was the end of the funk and disco age that yeah. turned into. The later stages ended up being New Jack Swing, yep. hip hop, mm-hmm. uh, and then I think what was also cool. Tell me if you agree or disagree with this, uh, <sighs> but you had a lot of European influences mm-hmm. in the music that made it dope. Right. I used to like, you know, uh, a, a lot of that stuff because music in them days. Uh, and John, correct me if you disagree, but uh, music in them days, particularly radio edits, you can turn on WBLS in New York City, 1985. And you might hear Prince, mm-hmm. and then you might hear 
uh, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. but then you might hear, you know, uh, somebody from like Culture Club, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or then you might hear David Bowie, David mm -hmm. Bowie, or something, right. and they would, you know, Run DMC, mm -hmm. and they would play it in that sort of sequence, mm -hmm. you know. And in them days, you just you didn't bat an eye that right. Madonna came on right after, you know, nah, you were listening to music. music. Yeah, yeah, you was listening. The, 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 the trick to that is um, the European influence was influence from the 60s soul movement yep. where um, what they call race music had got pushed to the background by um, Barry Gordy and Motown, oh. which took soul music and turned it pop. Yeah. yeah. So then, what was called race music that was soul music, things like uh, you know uh, well, Muddy Waters, it. you know the whole Stax collection, like the blues. That, yeah, the yeah. blues that got pushed to the background, but it it got a real strong foothold in Europe. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they took the blues, they played it at double time, and called it British rock because mm -hmm. that's all they were doing Rolling Stones if you listen to a lot of that music you'll see time. a lot of it is covers of 60 songs right. yeah. and they just do it double time because it's easier for them to do the rhythm without mm -hmm. having that syncopation and that hesitation in it they do it straight four on the floor fast right. and it becomes like a, a rock sound yeah. that, that they is that how like Elvis like kind of that's exactly James how. Brown, like how they kind of like that's exactly how. Yeah. El El and, Elvis, Elvis just straight stole. Well, yeah. he didn't even interview. A lot of it had to do the thing with Elvis. Um, the thing with Elvis was a lot of it largely had to do with where he was. He grew up mm -hmm. where well, he was born in Mississippi, but he moved to Memphis, mm -hmm. and Memphis had a very very strong soulful foothold as. John mentioned Stax. Stax was based in Memphis, right. mm -hmm. and so you 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 had uh, people like Chuck. I mean, even before James Brown, mm -hmm. you had people like Chuck Berry and Little Richard. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people were doing the kind of music that we kind of turn our noses up now, uh, like rock music, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. rock music. Mm -hmm. But we innovated that stuff. Yeah, they were killing. You know, they mm -hmm. they would they were killing it. You think about somebody like Jimi Hendrix. You know, anybody who's ever picked up a guitar right. would be. Uh, irresponsible if they didn't study him, mm -hmm. and that includes the white guys. Yeah. You know, and that includes the rock music. Yeah. You know they do. You know they do. And it's the same with Elvis. And you can just watch how he moved. And you know, I'm on record as saying I like a lot of that stuff. I don't have a lot of shade for music artists. Right. I just don't because uh, you just like because music I just I just I just like music, and mm -hmm. and I learned to appreciate even what Elvis was doing. Mm -hmm. But if you watched him, he legitimately was stealing. From Chuck Berry and Little Richard. I mean, Absolutely. James probably yeah. came a little after them, mm -hmm. but he certainly stole from well, those two. I, I'm gonna tell you something that's real funny. Not not that like, transition a little bit back to his '80s comment. The soul music or the R&B slash hip hop influence music that we got in the late '80s. It it started, you know, the introduction of New Jack Swing. Um, Groove Me, Teddy Riley, that mm -hmm. other stuff. Uh, Groove Me, when, when, uh, when, uh, when Teddy was producing for a lot of the hip hop artists, um, it made a big change because it took out a lot of the musicianship because a lot of the um, synthesized music and mm -hmm. electronics started coming in. Yeah. So uh, studio session musicians stopped working uh, a lot of different things stopped going on. People were using drum machines, pre-programmed beats and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the music started to have a more... Watered down. Uh, more <laughs> deliberate sound. Mm -hmm. It was less of a personal influence in the music. So mm -hmm. when you say 80s, that's kind of like the last, the last hole where you have real musicians right. playing music and yeah. giving a real interpretation of what they feel, right. felt. You know, that's the last... So one of the last decades where you had horns and strings Literally. in the song. That's that authentic. Regularly. Yeah. <laughs> regularly. 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 Making something authentic is yeah. how I, what, you, what you're saying is where I get it. Yeah. That's where I can relate to it and understand it better because the electronics weren't there. Yeah. Like, they didn't but have you know, those one systems. One thing that I will say about now, though, is that the, the creativity is, is, is up with regards to the content and the music. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be how it was in the past with regards to the actual, the, the, the musical parts, mm -hmm. but when I say the aspect of the music that, that is, is, is kind of taking a leap is 
the actual words, the content, the, right. the, the, the lyrics, the way words emerge together mm -hmm. that don't necessarily go together, but mm -hmm. you're making a point and those words end up going together. That's mm -hmm. why when I go back and I listen to Contagious mm -hmm. and I listen to how you strung it together, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you said earlier that you wrote that song after having watched the movie, you got up the next day you wrote a song. You right. mean, people take days to write a song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you got up and I'm you was serious. inspired. Yeah, <laughs> you know you inspired. All right, so here, here, here's here's my last question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I had asked you before if you had another if you had had an opportunity to perform the song, mm -hmm. and you said you had. Mm -hmm. Once you become big, mm -hmm. like real big, mm -hmm. first of all, don't forget it. <laughs> first of all, don't forget, don't forget it. Don't, don't forget, like, I can see how that radio. I remember when I I'll did an right interview with this show called. <laughs> you know, I still want to say, but I'll be right back. If you have an opportunity to perform that song or any of your catalog mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. now this is where you get to think big. You know how people walk around and say, oh, if I hit the $100 million lottery, mm -hmm. this is right. what I would buy. Right. This is where I want your mind at. Right. I want your mind to be thinking completely mm -hmm. limitless, mm -hmm. where would you perform? Super Bowl. You perform at the Super Bowl? I would hit it, I would, I would hit it right where it needs to be hit. Yeah, yeah don't forget us. Yeah, don't, that'd, be, don't. That'd, be one, that'd be one of the songs where they're like, all right, well, show us the songs you're gonna perform, okay. And then that'd be the one I don't add to the list. And at the end, they're like, wait a minute. Everybody's trying to figure out how to control it. That's that Janet Jackson, oops. Right, that yeah. oops. 12 second delay, bro. Yeah. Right, yeah. you yeah. first 12 yeah. seconds in. Cut to commercial. Right, right. But you get that 12 seconds in, though. Yeah. Yeah. But you know right. what, though? Oh, no, they, but you know what, though? Right. That's a very, very... Not only is it lofty, mm -hmm. but it's a doable goal mm -hmm. in the sense that there are people who perform at the Super Bowl every year who had no idea years before that they would be in the position to right. even be asked to do that. They right. get away with and, it. And, 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 <laughs> yeah. and they do it. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that to it. Thank you. None. <laughs> and I have stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. All right, so we're going to wrap up. Mm -hmm. um, give me something. Uh, that you want to share with the listeners before we wrap up. Give them how they can get in contact with you, any other information that you want them to have. This is where you do that. First of all, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, make sure you follow me. It's It's Vontae, I-T-S-V-O-N-T-A-E. Um, and also Instagram, the official Vontae. And just Google Vontae, V-O-N space T-O. No, V-O-N space T-A-E. Yeah. And yeah, more music and more videos, more performances, everything coming soon. So you bring it. And you know, half step on Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. You gonna hang out with us? Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna take our first break of the night. And when we come back, we're gonna get into the portion of the show that the regular listeners are familiar with. We call it What the Hell? And we've got a very, very special guest who joins us in the room. She'll join us on the mic on the other side of this break. I am Marcus J. That is John. That is Ivan. And that is our featured guest of the night, our brother Vontae. Marcus J and the crew and you will be back. A few of y'all stay with us. I'm going to shut this down and bring it back up. Yo.